I mean, it's my opinion. I think life is about subtle corrections of allowing or disallowing and the harvest of either one. I think that's what it is. Because if we associate thinking with life's happenings instead of action versus reaction, think of um, thinking does this. These thoughts do that. Thoughts that lead to actions with, which lead to reactions. Because I think it's selfish not to fulfill your own desires of your purpose because those are meant to be gifts to the world. So desire versus want. Mm. Desire is the need to produce something from within for you to do and you will spend time and energy to bring it into the earth. It's very creative. Wanting is not creative. You don't have to be creative to want something. If you fulfill your wants, it can lead to being broke. If you fulfill your desires, it'll lead to you being rich. Because every time you want something, you're not going to be the one that produces it. Every time you want something, if you fulfill your wants, you don't need to produce it. You just need to go get it. But to go get it is going to cost some money. Usually it's money. But for desires, if you fulfill your desires, it's going to come from inside. The desires are what's inside and the wants are what's outside. Desires are inside and wants are outside. Desires are inside, wants are outside. If you want a cake, you can go get the cake. That's a want. I want the cake. I'm going to go get the cake. If you desire a cake, you can make the cake. You get all the ingredients to make the cake. With all those ingredients, you can make five or ten cakes for the price of one. Because desire is fulfilled from within you. You know what's interesting, though, is that you know most of us are looking for excuses to do things that we shouldn't do. But we're not looking for excuses to do things that we should do. Things that's actually going to benefit our life. We look for excuses to do things. You know, if you want to do something, just go ahead and do it. You don't need an excuse to go do it. But we feel like we need an excuse to go do it. It's like they made me do it. Anything that you're tempted to do is because you already want to do it. I mean, that's how I see it. That evil thing that a person does is because they wanted to do it. And they were looking for the right time, the right moment, the right situation to do it. Or they're looking for a reason to do it. Looking for the reason to do something gives you an excuse to do that something. And then you blame the reason. You blame the excuse. You blame whatever it is because it freed you. It really freed you because you really wanted to do something, but you just couldn't do it. You didn't just want to just do it because you knew it was wrong to do. So you waited for an excuse or you look for an excuse to do it. If you look for an excuse to do it, you're going to find an excuse to do it. And I find that this is true with everything. I find that if we just think about something that we desire to do, something that's good, then find a reason to do it. Say, you know, what? I got to do this. I have to do this. I need to do this. I must get this done. Just do it. This way, you don't have anybody else to blame or praise except for inside of you. Because those desires are intended to be gifts for the world. Everything that's inside of you, the gifting that's inside of you, God wants to perfect it and prepare you to present it to the world. The only reason why we have to go out and buy anything is because we're not willing to do the work that it takes to do it ourselves. So those are the things that we go out and buy. Maybe you don't want to build your own car. So you go out and you buy the car. Maybe you don't want to build your own house. So you buy a house to the one that doesn't necessarily want to do that. The one that doesn't necessarily decide to spend that time and that energy learning how to do something, then that's the gift that they have that they can present to the world. So your gift makes room for you. Everything that you decide 
that you're going to do should really come from a deep desire from inside. Every desire that's inside of you is intended to be a gift for someone else. It's a gift for someone that hasn't necessarily spent the time investing into that same gift that you have. So that gift is for those that haven't worked for it. If they work for it, then they don't need yours. If they work for it, they don't need your gift. If you have a carpenter and that carpenter is offering his services to other carpenters, they're not going to buy his services because they already have the same gifts. They have the same talents. That carpentry gift is for those that don't have the carpentry gift. So that's why it's selfish not to fulfill your desires. It's selfish not to fulfill those God-given desires because those desires are intended to be a gift for someone else. Those desires are meant to be a gift that's going to make room for you out in this world. So what about thoughts and imaginations? If we stop looking at what somebody did to do something or to reach a certain level of success and instead ask them, what were they thinking? What were their thoughts? If we start equating thoughts with actions, with things that actually happen in life, I think that if we just stop thinking about what actions to take for different situations, that will be okay. I think that by the time we figure that out, the next generation will be here. We have to be able to associate thoughts with what happens. What thoughts were we thinking when we did something? You know, my parents used to say, when I did something real stupid as a kid, my parents would say, what are you thinking? What were you thinking? But when I did something good and creative, they would say, how did you do that? It's usually that we think about what did you do when you did something good? And when it's something bad, it's like, well, what did you think? I think that we should think more about what, what we think no matter what, because if it's a good thing that we did, we should think, what, the, what was I thinking? Because my thinking brought that. You know, if I did something stupid as a kid, my thinking did it. And if I did something brilliant as a kid, my thinking did it. So it's never really, what did I do? It was my thinking. What was I thinking that led to what I did, which led to that reaction of what I did? That's the way that I'm starting to think now. I'm starting to, to make these connections between what I think and how I think with what my life is, with, with what I see, with what I experience. And I think the best way to notice these things is to start noticing ourselves. What are my thoughts throughout the day? When I see a lot of success, what was my thinking? When I see failure, what was my thinking? When I see a lot of money, what was my thinking? When I see a little bit of money, what was my thinking? When I see abilities coming out, what was my thinking? What was I thinking? With every good thing that happened in my life, what was I thinking? That's becoming a new part of me now. I mean, you guys let me know.